It's time we prove once and for all what is the most OP weapon in Arc Raiders, at least until the next patch. So I don't know about you all, but I'm kind of getting tired of all these hype videos showing up in my feed about, oh my God, you're sleeping on this weapon or this is weapon is so OP. It's so amazing. And then it's something like a modded Rattler. I literally saw one the other day talking about how OP the Volcano was. Of course it's OP. It's a freaking auto shotgun. So let me let you all in on a little secret here. When it comes to PVP, every Every single gun is OP or can be OP in the right hands, except for the hairpin. That gun is trash and it will continue to be trash until it gets a massive buff. But every other gun is absolutely insane when it comes to PVP. And this is because we are essentially made of glass as players in this game. We are so incredibly fragile that anybody can own anybody in an instant with any gun. Most of these guns can down a player in a second or less. That combined with the fact that most of PVPing is about timing, position, awareness and all that stuff means that in the hands of someone experienced in PvP, any gun can be good and can perform well for a video. So what actually makes a gun OP in Arc Raiders? So there's a few different metrics we can look at here. First off, is it versatile? Is it as good at killing Arc as it is at downing people? If you got a gun that's good at doing both of these things, that makes it a really strong contender compared to other guns that specialize in one specific thing. This next one, I never see anybody take into account and that is resource cost. How how cheap is it to craft and how cheap is it to maintain to repair it? How quickly does it burn through durability? Because the more you have to repair it means the more resources you are spending. And that also leads into damage. The less bullets you have to fire to do the job, the better because that's less resources you have to spend. Considering the fact that this entire game is centered around looting and resource management, I would argue that along with obviously effectiveness because a gun needs to be effective, that resource cost is one of the more important things that nobody ever takes into account. So ideally, we're looking for a gun that is very effective at downing both people and arc, is relatively inexpensive to craft, deals very high damage, and burns through its durability slowly. So with this set of criteria, I had my work cut out for me because we don't know the durability burn on any of the weapons. However, in the last set of patch notes, they gave away some information that helps me understand the math that needs to be done in order to build a calculator that helps me figure out the durability burn of each of the guns in the game. Once I have this precise number, I can then figure out different things like its overall damage efficiency, so how much damage can we do per point of durability burnt, as well as other fun things like the total lifetime damage of the gun if you were to just take it from 130 durability to zero durability, how many magazines you can put through it, and all kinds of other fun stuff. But the main thing I'm after for the purposes of this video is to figure out the damage per durability, so that gives us an efficiency rating for the gun. The more damage we can do per point of durability means means the gun is more efficient because we are spending less resources to do more damage. The next thing to do is to get all of that data for the necessary guns. And we're not doing every gun because it's not worth doing every gun. First off, most of your light guns are going to be pointless because they're really good at downing players, but they're terrible at dealing with arc. So for example, the Stitcher and the Bobcat, we're immediately leaving those behind. Shotguns, really good with players, sometimes good with arc, but very situational. So we're also leaving all the shotguns behind. If any of you would like to gather the data for the guns that I am leaving behind, I will put a link to the calculator I built down in the description, free of charge. You can go down there and get it. And while you're over there, you should check out another app that I built, which is the loadout calculator, which we're also going to be using in this video. Moving on, we're also not going to count any of the legendary guns because they're a pain in the butt to craft. And when we're talking about efficiency and easy to craft, well, they just automatically lose out because of that. So basically that leaves all of the medium ammo guns, the kettle and the Berletta because their damage is relatively high in the grand scheme of things coming in at 10, where some of the other guns that we're going to take a look at in the medium range are even less damaged than that. And while they're not very good at puncturing arc armor, their laser-like precision makes them pretty good at hitting arc weak spots, meaning they can do a relatively okay job with most arc. And of course, if we're talking about high damage, that means we also have to take a look at each of the guns that fires heavy ammo. We are going to kick the Osprey out of this running though, because it's just too situational. It's really bad in close quarters. It's fine if you're out in the open, but it's a sniper rifle. It's just too situational to be versatile, which versatility is one of the things that we're looking at for the most OP gun. So that leaves us with the Venator, the Kettle, the Arpeggio, the Berletta, the Torrente, the Pharaoh, Anvil, Rattler, Tempest, Renegade, and the Patina. I know it's trash, but it's not hairpin levels of trash, so sadly, we have to include the Patina. Alright, so while not the most important, I took the time to gather this data, so I want to share it with you. Let's take a look at a chart here that shows our durability lost per shot. So clearly, lower is better, so at our lowest end, 
we have the Torrente, followed by the Kettle, then the Arpeggio, Berletta, Venator, Rattler, Tempest, Bettina, Renegade, and the Pharaoh and the Anvil are the worst, coming in at a durability loss of approximately 0.4 per shot fired. Which makes me really sad because I do love the Anvil, but it is actually an extremely inefficient gun. <laughs> Moving on to damage per durability lost. So the Venator is absolutely busted. Many of you already knew that the Venator is busted, but let me just give you some stats on the Venator here so you can get an idea of how busted it is compared to every other gun and they need to nerf this thing into the ground. The Venator deals 18 damage per shot, has a durability burn rate of 0 0.09. Its damage efficiency is 198. That means it does 198 damage before it burns a single durability. Its total lifetime damage when you max this thing out to tier 4 is 25,000 damage. Damage. The next in line gun to deal the next highest damage is the kettle coming in at 15,000 damage. This thing will burn through 143 mags if you don't do any upgrades to it. So this is standard mags. It'll burn through 143 of them with a total of 1,431 shots fired before it finally dies on you. The next most efficient gun is the kettle coming in at an efficiency rating of 121 damage per durability burnt with a total lifetime damage of approximately 15,750. 57, 78 mags to break it, and a total of 1,576 shots fired before it finally kicks the bucket. Following up with that, we have the Arpeggio, coming in with an efficiency rating of 114 damage per durability lost, total lifetime damage of approximately 14,829, which equates to around 65 magazines, and a total shots fired of 1,561. Here's the total breakdown on all of those weapons, all of their stats, if you're interested in that, but we're going to take a look now at our top three contenders because they are the most efficient. So we have the Venator, Kettle, and Arpeggio. Weighing these three guns together, I think we have to drop the Kettle. The Kettle is a solid choice because it's relatively inexpensive and if you're starting out new, I would say that the best possible gun for you to run and the most OP gun for you to run would be the Kettle. But for more established players, it's going to drop off in efficiency because then you open up into being able to easily craft two medium ammo guns, which are going to serve you much better when it comes to to downing people as well as being equally efficient at taking out Ark. And I think the third spot in this lineup is a good spot for the kettle to land. There's nothing wrong with the bronze medal. That leaves us with the completely busted Venator and the Arpeggio. When it comes to versatility, both of these guns are on a pretty even playing field. They both work really well in close quarters as well as open area. They have decent range, decent bullet velocity. So that means it comes down to overall crafting costs to take these things to level four. And if we plug each of these guns into my loadout calculator, we get a pretty clear picture of how easy it is to craft each one of them. And as many of you probably already guessed, it's significantly cheaper to craft the Arpeggio than it is to craft the Venator. The Venator is cheap in the grand scheme of things, but if we take a look at both of these breakdowns side by side, you need a whopping 36 simple gun parts if you are trying to craft all of your medium gun parts that you need for crafting the Venator. And to max upgrade it, it takes a a total of nine medium gun parts, where maxing out the arpeggio takes you a whole two medium gun parts. Even if you have to craft those medium gun parts to get them, you're still only spending a total of 15 simple gun parts on this gun. Other than that, it's just a buttload of metal and rubber, 140 metal and 60 rubber to be exact, to craft all the mechanical components you would need. Whereas if you have to craft the Venator and max it out, you need a total of 12 steel springs, which can be relatively hard to come by. That's another thing that you can't craft that you have to go out and farm besides the simple gun parts just so you can craft the necessary mechanical components. It also takes five magnets and depending on what augment you are running, that augment may be competing for those magnets. So I think that means we got to say the Venator takes home the silver here. Now it is a completely broken gun. Do not get me wrong. It's stats compared to all the other stats. Once again, here's that chart so you can take a look at how absolutely broken it is. It's stats compared to all these other ones is absolutely insane. And if it wasn't for it, its steep crafting costs, it would by far be even more broken than it already is. Thankfully, crafting them is a massive resource sink, which means the Arpeggio, maxed out at level four, is going to be the most OP gun in Arc Raiders based on versatility and overall resource efficiency. It is by far one of, if not the most resource efficient gun in the game. It's cheap to craft, cheap to upgrade, and cheap to maintain. It has a really good damage efficiency, it burns through durability, relatively slowly and there's no denying its versatility. So based on all these findings, let me know what y'all think down there in the comments.
difference. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Are you still going to run the Venator even though it's a little more inefficient to craft and maintain? I mean, it is a very broken gun. Or are you going to run the Kettle because it's extra cheap, even if it may be a little more difficult to take out Armored Arc with it? I honestly feel like we have a solid tier system here. So if you're starting out new, run the Kettle. Once your resources start to amp up a little bit, run the Arpeggio until you're just overflowing with resources that you have to waste and then just run the Venator because at that point you don't care about the crafting cost because you have resources to burn and other than the crafting cost when it comes to durability efficiency it's extremely durability efficient and just an all-around broken gun anyway we're gonna wrap it up there can't wait to see what y'all have to say down there in the comments once again if you want the calculator there'll be a link for it down in the description it'll be free hopefully y'all found this video helpful and informational if you did please consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you know if i want to upload other videos and if you're looking for some more of my content you can find a link to another one of my videos on the screen right now i want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free you all are absolutely amazing people if you would like to become an official channel supporter check out the links in the description below if you enjoyed this video please leave a comment down below let me know what you thought if you're shy you don't like to comment just hit that thumbs up button and share your support until next time thanks for watching